We met on a jeans project, right. a denim project. Carlos. With Carlos Quierte. Right. And immediately we started talking about clothes. <laughs> yeah, you might be one of the people who enjoys talking about clothes as much as I do. Well, I also love talking about clothes with people that make clothes. Because okay, people that, that I didn't know, but yeah, that makes because sense. People that make clothes, to me, have like the secret information. There was a time when I was younger when all of the kind of footwear brands and sportswear brands all had similar products and they were all available on the market. And Puma was a little bit less available. We grew up in a time in which you wore what you did. You know, if you wore a sports jersey, you were pretty much on a team. If you wore a concert t-shirt, you went and saw that show. I literally was in high school during the Preppy Handbook publication. So it was like getting the manual of how to dress in some of the clothes that people were already wearing. But then suddenly we had the instruction booklet and you could acquire those pieces. And that was my first uh, understanding of performing in clothes, like putting clothes on that would then put me in some other place. And then I think in the kind of 90s, the beginning of the 90s, suddenly people are wearing things that they're not from, that they didn't earn, you know, that they didn't get handed down. And that sort of opens up this great way of being like a, you know, a walking affiliation. But how do you, I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, you've acknowledged it. Well, how I feel it. about it is, if I wore what was really authentic, right? It's a Queens College sweatshirt from my mom, which I acquired from a vintage store a couple of years ago. But I said, oh, my mom went to Queens College. Now I've got the sweatshirt. Right. But it didn't exist. It wasn't handed down to me. And, and I think what you love ultimately is the most important thing. We wanted to try and recontextualize how Puma has been viewed in North America. That's the big picture story between Puma and Noah. It's odd how this came to be, because it all came off of one shoe. That quite frankly wasn't gonna be a commercial shoe in any way. It was a wrestling boot. We were just like, oh, that would be cool to do, let's do a wrestling boot. And that was gonna be the least commercial part of everything we made, but that inspired the whole thing, right? That led to this whole conversation about high school athletes and then other high school, you know, student types, archetypes, and what that would look like. And I'm sure without me thinking of it, it was mostly informed by my youth. Our creative for the campaign was built around a redefinition of the athletic champion from a traditional, you know, glory and external validation seeking archetype into someone rooted in self-determined passion. You know, as someone who doesn't do it for the glory, they do it for themselves. We wanted to show people who were fully invested in their sport or whatever it is to the point where they were willing to kind of be alone and like the aloneness that comes with being totally committed to something. In this case, it revolved around high school students who kind of are willing to stay behind in school when everyone else has left because that's where they can access equipment they need or, you know, can practice something or whatever, and, and they're willing to stay in school, which most kids are not willing to do. And we kind of wanted to, like, imagine what it looked like if Puma was in the conversation at that time. So, kind of like a longer history with the American market. So that was the general concept of the overarching theme of the relationship between Puma and Noah. And then, of course, that led to, oh, well, Collier knows everything about this. Like, this is your area, like, yeah. from a visual perspective, right? So it just made sense to, to ring you up. Yeah, I think my go-to is going back to high school. Right. I so solidly have, you know, lived periods of my art life going back to high school to shoot uh, wrestlers. But I've never asked you this. Why wrestlers? It, it happened because I did a, so crazy, I, I got an assignment from an architecture magazine to pick a, a space and shoot it like a person. And so I thought, oh, why don't I go back to my high school? Oh, wow. And I'll just go back 
in time. Wrestler A, take two. And so I, you know, I shot the lockers and I shot classrooms and then I said, oh, can I shoot the wrestling team? And it was just, a, I don't know, it was just like this feeling like, oh, I want to shoot. That's like the one sport when I was in high school, I just knew nothing about. Right. Never went in there. And, and I remember going through the, the gym, passing the basketball team. And like, I swear to God, like kids were making fun of me. <laughs> I had like a, you know, my camera wheelie or whatever. And then I got into the wrestling room and it was a completely different world. Different vibe. It was like complete focus and in this individuality. Yeah. Cause they're all different. You know, they're, they're, they're pairs and, and they're just beating the crap out of each other. And I was like, ah, I'm home. There's something about the vulnerability and the, the kind of dance and composition. And so after that, I started seeking out like a team right. to shoot. I happened to attend Blair Academy, the number one ranked wrestling high school in the country. Blair has continued to be a perennial powerhouse in the sport of wrestling. And while I was there, Collier kind of dropped in practice one day to start shooting her wrestler series. It wasn't that unusual to have a new face in the room. What was unusual is that there was now a camera and a lens and a different kind of frame around the relationship. The impact that Collier's images had on me and her presence had on me, it was like breaking the fourth wall. When you're aware that there's a camera watching you, you then start to become really conscious of your movements and your facial expressions and the ways that you look and move. And it, it was really the first time that I stepped out of myself and started to kind of look at who I was and even the performance of who I was in a more objective way. That was like one of the first dominoes in my life that started to unpack me questioning kind of orthodox masculinity, questioning the culture and the norms of the sport that had raised me. So in a very real way, Collier's presence and photos kind of changed who I was. Hudson was only introduced to us after the shoot by Collier, but we immediately recognized him as the real life embodiment of the spirit we were trying to convey in our characters. Someone unafraid to pursue their passions, no matter the circumstances. In that regard, and with the lifetime of devotion he spent standing up for those around him, he's the best definition of a champion that I can think of. You know, I think most of us find a way to live, you know, to get highs. And we get highs and then, you know, we kind of plateau and then occasionally we get a low. And I think sports, especially high school sports, really, they ramp you. You're like ramping up, you're ramping up. And so it's funny, like looking at sports clothes, like we throw on sports clothes without any of that engagement. Right. You know, we put on the jersey and, and in a way it's like you walk around and you feel a little bit of this like that your body's been doing something because you look and you recognize it like even just looking at the the master's in jersey and like immediately i'm thinking about what you wear underneath it and how it used to go over pads and it's really cool and it's like summer and it's airy and there's something sexy we are physical beings right like people are competitive people are physical and like we're meant to move we're meant to do things so like it makes perfect sense to me that human beings gravitate towards sports. But I'd say like today in our society, we're not physical enough. Like most people aren't getting enough exercise or doing enough activity, you know? So working with like sports brands reminds you of that a little bit. You're like reminded of like what's possible. I became an assistant wrestling coach at Columbia in New York City, where I actually thankfully got to reconnect with Collier again. But I started Athlete Ally to advance LGBTQ plus equality and inclusion. You know, we've seen more athletes come out, more allies speak out, and yet very much aware that this is not the beginning of the end, but rather the end of the beginning of a lot of this work. I also feel genuine about owing a lot of that initial critical thinking and exposure and awareness to the wrestler series that Collier brought to Blair and brought into my life way back in 2003. 
campaign is to solidify this reality that Puma is relevant within a historical American youth sense of style. In this case, it's kind of like what a high school kid might have looked like 30, 40 years ago wearing Puma. All of our high school experiences are rooted in memory, which kind of inherently has this distorted lens. Hindsight and wanting to not remember things. Collier's brilliance there is being able to pursue a naturalism that makes the image so intimate and so real. They were able to separate from a memory bound by narrative and just feel the moment. High school is this universally seminal period of development. You're seeking identity and trying to find a footing in a world that's increasingly becoming more erratic and unpredictable. I couldn't imagine being in high school now. It would be terrifying. I'd much rather exist in the world of Collier's images. Thank you.